This is Mitt Romney, and you're listening to the Paying Attention Radio Program with Tom Duggan. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! You think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention When you were just talking to me Do you think that you could repeat the question? Well, Facebook is so slow today. Yeah, it is on my end as well. But at least we're up and running. Something went right today, finally. Yeah. <laughs> I was really just convinced everything was going to go wrong today from beginning to end. But. It's getting there. Jesus. All right, we get it posted. We get this one posted. Think we can get Stephanie to do the bop buzz? Maybe. You're going to sing with us. going to do the bop buzz This is like your initiation. All right. We're going to wait too long for the bop buzz I'm just going to start the show. All right. Hi, my name is Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, it's up. Two Guys Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Uh, we've got a pretty good show for you today. Uh, we had, uh, a few weeks ago, we had Dave Id Consoli from Pleasant Valley Landscaping. She's already laughing, and I haven't even gotten there yet. Um, and we had a long discussion um, about, you know, unemployment and people not wanting to work. And it evolved into a discussion about why people, not just kids, not just high school kids, but people, even adults, should be going into the trades right now because that's where the majority of, of your real jobs are. It's very easy to get into if you know what you're doing, if you've got an education, if you've been trained as a welder. It doesn't really matter how long you've been doing it. People will hire you because the number of openings right now are huge. And then I got a phone call from someone that I've been a fan of for probably about a year and a half, although I don't think she thought that was true. But, uh, but I got a call from Stephanie Infante from the Great Lawrence Tech, of which I am an alum, a proud alum, by the way. Um, and she said, geez, you know, we'd really like to talk about some of the programs that we have uh, at the Great Lawrence Tech, which I'm going to probably call the Vogue through the entire show because that's what it was called when I was there. Um, and I said, well, this would be great because this goes exactly with our conversation. We like to try and keep a theme going here on the show. And uh, this goes exactly with uh, what we were talking about with Dave Id Consoli uh, at Pleasant Valley Landscaping. And so you brought with you Sue, and I'm sorry I don't have your name in front of me, Sue... So, uh, so Elmano. Yep, Elmano? Susan Elmano. I, apo- I apology. Yep. No problem. Uh, well, I know, I know a Lamos. I know a, a whole different variations of that. So when I saw it, it just it it, it broke in my head. No problem. Um, and you are the coordinator of grants, which is good because you guys need the money to be able to train to hire people to train kids. And do you do, you do adult uh, education there at all too? Absolutely. Oh, you do. That's what we're here oh, to this talk is, about. This, oh, this is great. Maybe maybe I'll leave the newspaper business because it's dying and I'll go into... Uh, I never finished carpentry. I went two years in carpentry and then I transferred to Lawrence High School because I was doing better in my classes than I was doing in shop. And my parents were like, yeah, maybe, maybe he's book smart. Maybe he's not so good with his hands. But she's now at 54. I'm thinking... Newspaper industry is dead. Maybe I'll go back into the trades. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do something. So, right here we have some coming up. So, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Tell us what you do at the Great Lawrence Tech, and what people need to know about the programs that are available. Okay, so let me introduce myself first. Okay, sure. My name is Susan Almano, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. and coordinator of grants. But I have a really long title because I'm also in charge of workforce development and evening career technical education programs. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're here to talk about. Mm-hmm. And I am Stephanie Infante, and I am the coordinator of marketing, community relations, and fundraising for Great Alliance. It's a Tech. long title. Long you guys title. gotta shorten those titles because when you put a thing on your desk, the thing the the, the board's going to be this long, right? Luckily, with your name and your have, title. Oh, you don't, don't do those? Nope, no, nope. okay. <laughs> so, so talk a little bit about um, what it is that uh, you're offering to the community and why people should consider this as an option. 
either one. So let's first talk about what we're offering to the community, and then let's talk about why. Okay. So I think that you should know that first we're offering three trainings this fall that are specifically for people who have never worked in the trades. They could have gone to the Vogue School, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Oh, so sorry to interrupt you, but one thing um, before we get into that, one thing that's really important to know about Greater Lawrence Tech is that we're a three-level school. So before we get into that, let's talk about the overall school. So we have our day program, which is 9 through 12. We have the after dark program with Lawrence High. Um, these students, they apply in the 10th grade. And from 11th grade, their 11th and 12th grade years, um, they spend the, half of their day at Lawrence High for their academic courses. And then they come in the evenings to us to learn a trade. And the third level is the adult education program that we, that we serve. So those are three different ways that we serve our, our four ascending communities. Right. And we started doing all of this probably way back, but especially there's an emphasis on this now because the Baker Polito administration is really pushing something called the Career Technical Initiative, mm -hmm. which is seeing how we can use our technical schools day, afternoon, and evening as we're doing. And as a matter of fact, uh, Greater Lawrence Tech is one of the most innovative schools uh, in the Commonwealth in this area because we do have programs at all three times. Mm -hmm. yep. So, okay, to get back to what we're doing with adults in the evening, as I was saying, the, the first kinds of classes I'd like to talk to you about are the um, classes that we're offering this fall that are introduction to classes. And these are classes that are going to be both um, classroom and hands-on training so that um, adults will be able to understand the theory, but also the materials, the tools, the fasteners, all the different kinds of materials that you use in a specific trade. So this fall, we're offering a plumbing class, a welding and metal fabrication class, and an automotive technology class. And we're going to start plumbing and automotive technology on September 20th. And our welding class is going to start a little bit later on November 1st. And these are evening classes. So they're Monday through Thursday, Thursday, uh, 4 to 8. Mm -hmm. And then all of them also have four hours of online work every week. They're 300 hours in total, so they're going to end um, after the winter break in January. Uh, the welding will finish in March. And the thing about it is that they are going to prepare people to get an entry-level job. And we are in partnership with the Career Center on these, so the career counselors at the uh, Mass Hire Career Center will be helping with the job search and the job placement. So this is the second time we're doing these and the, these pro this program. We also did it um, last winter. It was very successful. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about those successes in a minute after we talk about the programs themselves. And um, you, we want everybody to know that they are no cost because they are grant funded from the state. Nice. And so that's also, now is the time to take advantage of this opportunity because we have the grant for this year, but we're not sure about next year. Right. So this is the time to to come in and do these. So if, you, so if, you, if you're looking for part-time work in a, in a trade and you're not trained, but you'd like to be, this is, this is the time to do it. If you're looking for a full-time job in the trades, or if you're thinking of changing uh, jobs, which I, I do every day, because <laughs> um, I'm in a very tough business, um, this, is, this is the thing to do. Um, Go to the Greater Lawrence Vocation. You guys have a website, right? Was it GLTS? www.glts.net. .net. Um, and you, I assume you can sign up, mm -hmm. right? And so actually where to sign up is you should call the Mass Hire Career Center. They're helping us with the registration. Okay. So they have an information session twice a week. And what the number to call is 978-722-7000 to register for an information session, and then you'll find out about how to sign up. Great. So you also have, uh, so is there, a, before I move on, is there a, a limit to how many people can, you can accept? I mean, is there, is there a maximum classroom size that you have to worry about? So this is something that, that, that because it was so successful last time, people need to get in on this soon. This Absolutely. isn't something you can wait, right? No, don't wait. And look, it's already the 19th of August. So right. we've got a month before the yeah. classes start, but there is an enrollment process so yes, people should call now, get signed up for an information session so they can get the ball rolling. Okay. And it's only 12 people per class. 
That's it? So, yep, that's it. Wow. It's because, you know, there's a safety factor when you're in the trades. You want to make sure you're in that shop, and our instructors need to be keeping an eye on everybody. Right. And all those power tools, everybody's just learning. So, right, it's only 12 per class. It's like having a bunch of adult freshmen, right? Because they, right. they, <laughs> no. they don't know what they don't know, right? That's right. And I learned that my first day at the Great Alliance Vogue when I walked into the carpentry shop. And I thought, wow, look at all these machines. Look at all this. It was overwhelming. Right. And I was afraid. I was afraid I was going to hurt myself. So unless there was an instructor standing right over me, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah, that's the thing that I know. People who ever worked in the trades, you know, you can feel like every power tool you meet, you're like afraid of it. Right, yeah. Because they are really dangerous. Right. And 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 you guys push safety. I mean, I remember even way back when I was there, back before they invented fire, um, it was safety, safety, safety. Like, you had to write safety rules. When you got in trouble, you had to rewrite the safety rules mm -hmm. until you knew them backwards and forwards. And if they found you not following it, you can you can get in big trouble. Now, let's see. That was That's back true. before fire. So, yeah, there's been a lot of new safety <laughs> yeah, rules right. in the meantime. Right. The first thing that we always do is OSHA 10 training. So it's yeah. OSHA 10 construction safety is the number one thing. Yeah, we don't want anybody to get hurt. Even, so, even with me, like when I do um, tours of the school, mm -hmm. um, someone, I, I think it was like one day I had like open-toed shoes. And they're like, you you can't do tours with your open toe shoot. I'm like, oh, sorry. So that's how serious, you know, yes. even even if it's just on the outskirts of, of the shops, even if it's something so, so mm -hmm. small like that, they're very, very serious about and it. For, and for good reason. For I mean, good you're, you're, reason deal, you're dealing with things yeah. that can really hurt someone. Yep. Now, you guys must have an incredible safety record. Now, I've never looked. This is just off the top of my head, right? So maybe, I'm at, maybe I shouldn't be asking because I don't know what the answer is. They always say, don't ask the question unless you already know the answer. Um, but I, I would imagine that you guys have had a, a stellar safety record up there, given how seriously they take people wearing their safety goggles in the in the shops and all that stuff. I don't, from what my knowledge, I I don't know. I'm not aware of any safety issues that we've right, had. Right. Yeah, I've heard of um, no accidents. Yeah. So exactly. I mean, I, I would think if if that had happened, we would have heard about it at, at the newspaper, right? Because right, somebody yeah. be calling saying, "Hey, some kid just cut his arm off." Right. Um, Please, oh, that'd be awful. <laughs> right? No, no, no. We don't. No, no, we no, 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 we don't. So you guys offer other programs too. Right. So it's really important to know about these programs that we just mentioned that are happening now, starting September 20th. Call the Mass Hire uh, Career Center to sign up. 978-722-7000. But now we also are launching apprenticeship trainings this year, which is really exciting because we've never offered these before. But, you know, you get that first job in plumbing or electrical. Mm -hmm. Well, what you want to do is you want to advance to get your journeyman uh, uh, license. But to do that, you have to take four years of apprenticeship training. And so in the past, you know, you'd have to go all kinds of different places maybe Whittier, but certainly not GLTS, to take these classes. So this is our first year that we're going to be offering apprenticeship training. Mm -hmm. And it's in four different levels, and we're doing it in plumbing and electrical. And if you've never taken these classes before, there are some entry requirements. Mm -hmm. So for electrical, um, you can sign up. You need to be working with an electrician um, and you can come and take the first level. It's going to be two nights a week. It's 150 hours over the whole year. So for the plumbing, you actually need to be signed up as a plumber apprentice, which you do with the state, and you have to have a master plumber who signs off on your apprenticeship card. Mm -hmm. And then come and you can sign up, and it's also the first 150 hours. So these classes, there I said there's many levels. So, right, you start at level one, but after you take that, you're two, three, four, and then you are ready to take the journeyman exam for both of these trades. And I mean, the, why, would, why would anyone do all that work? Well, I was just thinking that myself. <laughs> why would anybody want to do that work? It, well, exactly, because at the end, let's say you start out at $17, $18, $20 an hour, but when you become a journeyman, then I, you'll be making $40 to $60 an hour. So there's a big difference. Sure. And, uh, you know, that's what we're all about at Greater Lawrence Tech. That's why we're even doing adult education, because what we're looking for is to help people get into living wage jobs. Right. Yeah. You know, that's why we talk, too, that we, it's great to get a college education. We would never say don't do that. But on the other hand, there is a huge demand in the trades. And it's a way to be able to work, if you don't want to go to college, and come and get a really good job where you will make a family-supporting wage. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and uh, middle class lifestyle. It's it's very helpful for the community too because you've got local people, and I keep using David Consoli as an example, but I, we've had a number of people come in um, who work in the, in those different businesses who all say the same thing, and they're looking for qualified people, and they can't keep up with the work that they're getting. Absolutely. So this is something that helps the community because it helps local businesses, but it also helps you pay your rent. It also helps the landlord because you're paying your rent, mm-hmm. right? And so it has this snowball effect. So what it is that you guys are doing is it really should be, should, this should be done nationwide. And Dave and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, this is something that every, every, I think every public school should offer some kind of vocational training because let's face it, not every kid goes to college and kids that do go to college don't always end up in the field that they went to college for. Yep. If they have something to fall back on in the meantime, whether it's carpentry and making cabinets or plumbing or whatever, um, that, you know, that helps them, but it also helps the economy. It helps, it helps us locally. But I think that's a really good point. You can go to college and still go into the trades right? because it's not like the trades does not require a lot of ability Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it really does. And it's both the mental ability to understand how everything works and practically an artistic ability to put things together and to do it right. Right. And to problem solve. You know, that's the thing that so many of the trades have a maintenance technician, you know, or a service technician. Mm -hmm. You have to go out and troubleshoot. So there's a lot of problem solving in the trades. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is it's a starting point. You know, let's say you want to go into um, electrical, but then you want to go on to work for a big company and be an estimator or to become an engineer or a construction supervisor. All those things you can do. It's just getting those hands-on skills first kind of sets the building blocks Mm -hmm. so that you're ready to move on. And going back to the opportunities that vocational schools offer. So for example, you know, I, gra- you know, I graduated from Greater Lawrence Tech in 2012. My trade or my vocational education was in marketing. So I did have to go to college, right? Uh, so that's one option. The second option, you go right into your trade, you work right after, right after co- um, high school. The third option um, or example that I, I like to use is my younger sister. So she graduated in 2019 from plumbing. And now she's a student at Wentworth Institute studying construction management. So there's so many different options right. as a vocational student that you can take. And I don't think many people realize that. Um, I think people think it's just you go out and work right away. Um, they don't realize the opportunities that come with it. And speaking of opportunities, um, going back to what you mentioned, Tom, about uh, employers getting involved with adult education and, and all that good stuff. One thing that I want to no, especially for any employer that you know that's watching this this podcast, get involved with vocational edu- educational institute while the students are still high school students because they can participate in the co-op program and have that student with them throughout the years. They'll you know help train a great employee and then they'll help with um, they can help them reach their their license their you know licenses and keep an employee that they know that has the proper education and has the commitment, particularly to their, to their company, right? Mm-hmm. So that's really important too, like getting, getting started early, getting involved early, so you can maintain that, that loyalship as well. I want to thank our sponsors. Before we move on, I want to thank our sponsors. I usually do that at the top of the show, McLennan Real Estate, AFC Urgent Care. I'm wearing my AFC. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm wearing my AFC Urgent Care um, shirt that Lisa Williams was nice enough to give me, and they're going to be doing immigrant immigration screenings. If you uh, need um, uh, a, ch- a checkup, a health checkup for um, your immigration to become an American, they're going to be doing that. Uh, they were initially planning on doing that starting this month, but I guess some of the COVID upticks and, and all of the uh, the testing, they're a little busy right now. So she's not going to come in this month. She's going to come in next month, I think, when it slows down a little bit. I also want to thank Marsan and Sun Construction. I just lost everything on my screen. Marsan and Sun Construction. This is a great time um, before you know before the uh, before the the, the uh, wow. <laughs> huh? Before, before the winter gets here, I couldn't think of the word winter, go. right? That happens. Before the winter gets here, uh, this, is, this is the best time if you have to uh, fix your roof. If you want to put an addition on your house, you should call Mars St. and Son. EIS investigation and gun training. I had two people call me this week and said, hey, I want to go for my gun license. I see pictures of you on Facebook at the shooting range. What's the best place to go? I tell everybody there's a coupon in the Valley Patriot. You get, I don't know if it's like $10 off or 10% off, uh, but grab a Valley Patriot, go to EIS 
Test Investigation and Gun Training in Methuen. Borelli's Deli, who we love to death, and I'll be getting my totalini salad after the show. I don't know if you guys have been to Borelli's Deli. Best butternut squash ravioli on the planet and the best totalini salad anywhere. I, yeah. and, and I'm not just saying that because they advertise. They're advertising because I used to say it on the show for free. I used to come in and just talk about how great they were and they finally called and said, you know what? We should be advertising with you. Uh, Tomo and Happy Crab, Tomo Hibachi down the street. We're usually there on Saturday, Saturday nights. I haven't been there with, uh, it's Jaina. We haven't been with It's Jaina for a while, so maybe this weekend we'll do that. And, of course, Pleasant Valley Landscaping with Dave Id Consoli. They're actually not booking any show. They're not booking any jobs right now, uh, but they do support the show, so they're continuing to... uh, to be a sponsor of the podcast. And now, of course, Great Alliance Technical School, which we love having you guys here. Um, when I was going to the, to the Vogue, the common perception was the smart kids went to Lawrence High School and Central Catholic and St. Mary's, and the dumb kids went to the Vogue. And so we were always getting dumped on by the other schools, and sometimes even the parents of the kids that went to the other schools. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you're just a Vogue kid. That has really changed, hasn't it? Like, I, I went to... My first year at the Vogue, I'm going to date myself now, right? <laughs> my first year at the Vogue was 1981, all right? Mm-hmm. So that goes back quite a while. But it's really, really changed now. Can you, can you guys talk about that, the difference in, in how people perceive what you guys are doing? Yeah, I can, I can actually give you a personal ex- uh, story. When I was applying to, to high school, I was told not to apply to the Vogue because I wouldn't have a career. I wouldn't be successful. Wow. And look at me today, right? And... Um, I still have, I mean, I used to, I was a former school committee member, and now I work at the school, but I still have parents messaging me on Facebook, calling my cell phone, asking how can I get my kid in the VOC, they're on the waiting list, you know, they, they, they need that hands-on training, so it went from, oh, like, only the bad kids went to the VOC, to now, like, I need my son or daughter there, and um, it's, it's, it's amazing to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's amazing to see. And, and people are realizing that there are different types of learning. Um, learning, I'm going blank here. It's okay. Um, I just did it a couple of seconds ago. Yeah. So, so <laughs> there's a lot of different ways that, pe- that students learn. And, and parents are, are and, you know, supporting that now. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a good thing to see. I think, too, back then, there wasn't a lot of money being put into the school. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was there before all the renovations. I was there during the original building. And I remember walking through the building thinking, wow, this place is a dump, right? I can't believe I come here every day. Then um, Mr. Vizarka was in charge, I think, of at least starting the renovation project. Mm-hmm. I think he left before it was all done, if, if I have that right. Mm-hmm. But I remember going to your uh, grand reopening your, after everything was done, and I could not believe what they had done with the school. I, I, it must have cost millions. Because I walked through that school and said, wow, this isn't even close to what it was like when I was here. You need to see the back of the school now. So really? we just finished, or added, we're finishing up something like that, um, the renova- the state-of-the-art athletic complex that we have. It's amazing. So we have a brand new football field, brand new concession, um, outside locker rooms. Uh, we just finished the, our baseball field, which is now also the home field of Merrimack College. Oh, great. We finished a softball field. Um, either we're finishing or working or something like that. Um, a training, a practice field, and another softball field, and I think a field for the soccer team. So when you look at when you look at the whole back of the school, it's like, wow, we the we have the best looking complex outside <laughs> <a> complex field. <laughs> right, yeah, and the thing yeah. is too that there's been so much investment in state of the art yeah. equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, we just won a grant that now we're allowed to talk about. Uh, from the skills capital grant for our welding and metal fab department so that we can really upgrade our metal fab equipment. And we've also, the last few years, received grants from that same skills capital grant for our advanced manufacturing Mm -hmm. so that we're really at state of the art and have been able to get the kinds of equipment that our employers need us to train on so that people are ready for the industry. Right. So now, who who is your target audience for the after school program for the, I'm calling it after school, for the adult program. Is there, is there a certain demographic that you're targeting? Is it people like my age in their, in their early <sighs> 50s, <laughs> believe it or not? I hate to say that out loud because I'm yeah. still single and I lie when I date. Um, but but is, it, is it people in their, in their later in life? Is it, is it kids that maybe 
are in their t- late 20s that have kind of gone through college and are kind of lost now because they don't know what to do? What is your target marketing audience? The thing is, we, we're not targeting really in terms of age mm-hmm. or, or stage in life, but there are a, a certain eligibility criteria. And those are that we are looking for people who have a high school diploma, mm-hmm. can be from the United States or another country, and um, who are able to pass at a sixth grade level, reading and math assessments. People who are unemployed or underemployed, and underemployed really just means you're working at a job that isn't a career pathway, mm-hmm. and you're probably not making much money. You know, it's hard to support yourself on it. Mm-hmm. And also who are mass resident and work authorized in the U.S. Um, what we find is that most of our um, trainees are young adults. They're, maybe they just graduated from high school or a couple of years ago, or right, they're a lot of times in their 20s, maybe have gotten to a point where they realized, wait a minute, I need to get into something. Maybe they're recently married, have mm-hmm. a new baby, and they're like, I need a career here. I, I can't be bouncing from job to job anymore. Right. Um, oh, we hear a lot, I wish I would have went to the Volk and not X, Y, and Z school. Right. They're, they're starting to realize how you know, they need that hands-on training or... or they're looking into something new, um, and I and I think that I think that's why we have a lot of more young adults too. Um, the perception that we used to, the reputation that we used to have back in the day, and now is just now trades are everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I think that might be another reason why we're seeing right. The younger, that's true. The younger crowd. Yeah. 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 We do have a, a student who is right now. He graduated from HVAC, and. He was a student over at Lawrence High School who was in the Merrimack College program. He had a lot of opportunity to go to college, and he decided himself, you know what? I don't want to do that. I do want to get into HVAC. There is a future here, and I want to be part of it. And as a matter of fact, it's a partnership that we have, this particular program, with the MassSave program that you might know that Mm -hmm. does energy efficiency work in homes in Massachusetts. And they are sponsoring a group of our HVAC graduates adults and high school graduates to have a six months month internship in local HVAC companies and there's a really high demand for them to mm-hmm. go into this work and these HVAC companies they are also a different kind of HVAC they're doing what you call um, ductless mini splits that's all they do because this is going to go in that direction of electric energy as opposed mm-hmm. to using natural gas and um, oil so that there's these kinds of internships that are available. And this young man wants to be on the cutting edge of this. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. Yeah, people are deciding there is so much work in the trades and there's so much interesting work where they're going to be using, yes, it's, it's a hands-on skill, but it's also really a mental skill. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're just graduating a class of um, electrical students. And so it's good for employers to know, too, that we have these students ready who have just completed a 250-hour course on electrical. And as a matter of fact, when we're looking for uh, electrical apprenticeship jobs, there are so many in the Merrimack Valley that our students are, are applying to like 15 job opportunities each because they're just right on the Internet. Wow. Yeah, wow. there's a lot of opportunity. So what if someone's at a, at a school somewhere else and they just want to take these part-time courses? Can they do that? Is that conducive like with their with their college schedule or if they're at high school somewhere else can they come and take this nighttime class or is that really more for adults I mean it depends on what you mean by student the thing is that we are these classes are designed the adult classes not the apprenticeship classes the adult classes are designed for people who want to go to work in the trades Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so if they're at school somewhere else like going to college this isn't a hobby course it's not so that you learn a little bit more about your car so you can change your own oil. Or you want to do a little bit of plumbing work in your bathroom. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. This is to go to work in the trades. And especially because it is a no cost to the participant. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, there are other schools that offer more hobby courses. Um, but these are really if you want to go to work in the area. Great. We've got about six minutes left. So those who are watching... Um, what do you say to them if they're thinking about doing this? How do, you, how do you push them over the edge? Like, they've heard what you said. They kind of like it. Still not sure. How do you get them there? Like, make your pitch. Well, first Either I'm going to say, I'm, I'm not the, we're going to leave that to <laughs> Stephanie. She's probably really good at that. But I'm going to say, 
come to the information session and hear more it. about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just call just up 978 722 7000, that's the career center, and say, I want to sign up for an info session on the trainings that are happening over at Greater Lawrence Tech. And the most important thing for individuals to remember is that you're investing in yourself. What better person to invest in? The worst that can happen is, you know, you change your mind, maybe this is not for me, or maybe you, you ask a question and you get a no for that question. But there's no risk to getting information for yourself or mm-hmm. to invest in yourself. So that is my pitch. Do not wait. Contact us and, you know, do it for you. And do you want to make, we get a few minutes left, do you want to, do you want to make a pitch for your regular classes, for, the, for what, what you guys normally do outside of like the after school stuff? Yeah, so we have currently right now um, 19 vocational and um, technical programs. They vary from, you know, carpentry to really hands-on or more like a, a classroom setting like business technology. And I want to say if you have children who are thinking about going to Greater Lawrence Tech or the Volk, apply. Even, even, if, even if the Volk is not the first option, apply because we are very competitive. We can only accept like, I think it's now. Like 450. Four, I know it's less than that per class. So it doesn't hurt, going back to my, to my other pitch, it doesn't hurt to apply. The worst you can, you can get is a no or a wait list, mm-hmm. but still apply. Get it out there. And, and I, do not wait to apply either. Like, get it in as early as possible. Does that matter? Like, the, if, if someone applies sooner rather than, like, it on the deadline, does that count against them if they, like, sign up late? I'm not sure how much. I don't, I don't know if that is taken into consideration um, in our I don't, But just do it anyway. But just do it anyway. Yeah, because yeah. you'll be one of the first applica- applications that they'll review. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you won't be waiting until April to know right, right. what's going on. But I'd like to make a pitch here. Sure. Because we have another program we haven't talked about that's called the After Dark program. That's for Lawrence High School students. Mm-hmm. So I would like to make a pitch to all of those ninth graders who applied to Greater Lawrence Tech and didn't get in. Mm-hmm. Do what you need to do to have good grades at Lawrence High School in ninth grade and 10th grade. In 10th grade, apply to the After Dark program. This is a program for Lawrence High. They come over to Greater Lawrence Tech from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. They do academics at Lawrence High School from 11 to 2. Then they come over and they are at our school in the afternoon, 3 to 5. We've got four programs open right now. HVAC, Metal Fab, Advanced Manufacturing, and Auto Tech. So they're getting 900 hours of technical training. They graduate with a technical certificate and a Lawrence High School diploma. Wow. And this is a super opportunity for those who didn't get in or those who realize in ninth or 10th grade, wait a minute, I don't really want to go the direction of just comprehensive high school. I want to go to the Vogue. Right. They can do that. And And we were the first school in the Commonwealth to bring this program to life. It's, a, it's an amazing yeah. program. I've never heard anything like it. Yeah. Yep. And so it's called the After Dark Program. Look on our website. It's, there's a nice explanation and, you know, click to apply. Same process as uh, to apply to the Vogue yep. as a ninth grader. I had so much fun doing this because normally we come in, we talk about politics, we make people mad because I take a position <laughs> on stuff. And then every once in a while we get to do like an educational show. Mm-hmm. And I feel so... I feel so um, uh, grateful that Stephanie called because even though you guys are getting something out of it, we're getting something out of it too. We're learning about the community, how it works, the education system, and what you guys are doing. And I think it's important to promote this stuff. Will you come back? Or is this something that you'll that you might want to do like on a regular basis? Because we'd love, I'd love to make this like a regular staple of the show and try and help you guys recruit people who are look. There's a lot of lost people out there yep. that are looking for even like me. I'm always looking for like some kind of part time consulting work or whatever. There's people are always out there looking for something else. And this is going to be a great fit for some of those people. And we want to make sure that we can steer them in that direction rather than have, you know, continue to just kind of float around and looking for things, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're a hidden gem. So any way that we can, any opportunity that we can get to promote the school and help others, like, like the superintendent says, we are a community school. We're here to help. So, yes, we would love that. <laughs> Susan Almano, did I say it right? That's it. Susan, well, almost. Susan Almano. Oh, no, I apologize. It's okay. Um, and Stephanie Infante from the Great Alliance Technical School, formerly known as The Vogue, when I was going there. Um, we, I appreciate you guys coming in. I really would love to have you come back, maybe once a month if you can. Um, and I don't know if, 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 if that's okay, but we'll, we'll work out the details off the air. Uh, I also want to thank our sponsors. You can roll up, Mel, if you want. Uh, Chrissy, I want to thank Chrissy, our fine, fine producer. Thank you, Chrissy. Hi. Um, 
McLennan Real Estate. We're going to try and get Matt on in the next couple of weeks uh, to talk about the real estate market. What we hear from him when he calls in, when he zooms in, is always fascinating. It's always the opposite of the answer I think I'm going to get when it comes to the real estate market. AFC Urgent Care. I've got my AFC shirt on. I want to thank Lisa Williams and Zaka and everybody over there. They're fantastic people. Um, Marsan and Son Construction. This is the time. This is the time before the snow starts to fall because that's right around the corner. EIS Investigation and Gun Training. Again, this is the place to go if you want to get your gun license or if you just need a private investigator to follow your wife around or your husband around because you think maybe oh, no. something <laughs> funny is going on. Uh, Tomo down the street uh, on Broadway and Methuen. Uh, Happy Crab, which is right across the street. Clear Path for Veterans New England. I think we're going to get Jason and Randy in here again sometime in the next week. And Pleasant Valley Landscaping. Greater Lawrence Tech as well. And we wanted to give a free shout out to somebody, but I can't remember who it is. And Melvin Taylor says we got to go home. So go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.